especially late morning, definitely for me at least. It's 10 o'clock, people, and I'm in Scotland. I'm excited, but I'm also absolutely knackered. Um, it's been a rough old ride with my mental and physical health the last few days. Things have not gone to plan. But I'm here on the shores of Loch Venchar. Is that what I said? Venchar or Ve Venachar? Let me have a look at this thing. Oh, wait, wrong page. Got this guidebook. Now you can see. Ta-da! Um, it is, I'm just checking for some reason I get it wrong. Venachar. See that? There is the spelling. How do I say that with a Scottish accent? Loch Venachar. Oh, is that Irish? Oh, no, that's Irish. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Sorry if this causes offence. I don't mean it. Um, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> Hysteria. Uh, anyway, I'm going to walk around the lock. It's 12 miles. It should be kind of nice. Um, it's going to be a test of my back, see whether it can hold up. Um, obviously, it's not a particularly huge distance for me under normal circumstances. We are not under normal circumstances. Uh, climate situation, it is quite overcast, a little bit of rain coming down, quite windy, but not too bad at all. Um, I'm actually just looking forward to this. I think it's mostly forest tracks and just quiet lane walking. We get to touch on the Great Trossachs Path as well, um, which is a 30 mile route that sort of runs along this loch and Loch Catherine, which is kind of cool. And I want to do that at some point. Um, there's so much I want to do. It's ridiculous. Like you do something and it's like, yeah, I did something. And I've just added five more things to the list. Can you relate? Yes. Yes, I expect you can. Um, generally speaking, I'm in good spirits, which is cool. Uh, it's my last day here. I'm just gonna make the most of it, um, have some processing time, have some nice nature time. And it's a Monday, this car park is empty. Yesterday, it was absolutely jammed. So how times have changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, that'll do. I would say I'm getting my boots on, but they're already on. So get my pack on, get out the door, other way around. Let's do some hiking, people. Let's go. If you like, act like you're happy, you'll be happy. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> Camera. Bosh. 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 Those who say they can and those who say they can't are both usually right. Today, I say I can. So, I can and I will be right. Camera. Bye, car. See you in a bit. Welcome to Loch Venachar, a small hill from the Loch Shore. You can see Ben Venu. I was maybe going to go up there today, but I'm not sure now. Another day, I will venture up you. Um, its name is means the Little Mountain. <laughs> High water mark. Although the loch may look completely natural, its water level has been raised. Water from nearby Loch Catrian naturally drains east through Loch Venachar and eventually flows into the River Forth. And the fresh water was used to supply Glasgow. It's still in use today. I don't know what my accent is. <laughs> Never mind. Leave enough of that. Let's go. <laughs> I'm actually uh, not even on the trail right now. I realise I haven't parked in the car park that my guidebook suggests. Because this one's free. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can follow the shoreline and then cut up. I need to cross the road and get up. So I'm going to see if I can get to a farm and hopefully then I can join the Trossachs Trail and uh, venture along the shore. And that's my phone going off, apparently. There's a signal here. It felt exciting to be tackling a low-level walk, knowing that ahead lay a relatively level trail with plenty of opportunity to relax into the pace of nature. Loch Venachar has a maximum depth of 33 metres and is home to an immense ray of watery wildlife from brown trout, pike, salmon, to sea trout and perch. I wasn't really expecting to see any, but it was a wonderful feeling knowing that they were right there under the surface. Okay, I've decided to leave the shoreline because it was getting quite tree-y and I uh, just come up to the road here. Trouble is, these cobbles are exceptionally slippy, so <laughs> I'm just being a bit careful. Dun, 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 dun. I made it. Woo! All right, speed your feet, let's go. Oh, geez, I could have just come up there. Never mind. Life's too short to take the easy path. Try telling me that a couple of days ago. <laughs> What's the deal there? Someone's left a chair. I want to investigate this. I wouldn't mind a chair. Oh, look, I'm going back down to the beach that I just left. <laughs> 
Hi, poor lonely chair. Are you okay? Oh, soaking wet. I'm not going to sit on that. <laughs> also, I hope that was water. I'm good. Well, if that's still there later, I will find myself a chair. Meanwhile, let the walk continue. Camping by permit only. So basically, uh, there's these camping management zones throughout the Trossachs National Park, Lot Loma and Trossachs National Park. And basically what that means is you have to book a permit. Um, they're trying to sort of minimize degradation of the environment. A lot of people disrespecting it, leaving trash everywhere. It's real sad, but I do find it a bit frustrating because when you're like a lightweight backpacker like me and so many people who love nature and want to become a part of nature, having to get a permit is actually sometimes really difficult, especially now, sort of post COVID times. So it's got a very mixed sided views for me, uh, but generally speaking, environment comes first over my freedom in it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, fair enough. But that's the permit thing. So just in case you're wondering, yes, Scotland is land of the free, but you can't actually camp everywhere without a permit. All right, let's go. Slow progress today. <laughs> hey, let's go to the cafe. We've walked all of a hundred meters. So we've got the boating centre here. Really beautiful spot, as you can see. And I'm wondering if this is where we can head up to the Trossachs path. Alrighty, so gonna leave the lock side behind and chance this forestry shack and see if we can get up to the Trossachs path. Then from there, hopefully, we'll just be on the route that I actually wanna follow. Not that I'm too worried at all. I think it's relatively straightforward. We can see the lock, I'm doing good. And it's quite a big body of water. Ah, looks like a wee bit of a dead end. I'm gonna pursue this corner. If I can forge my way through this forest, I should be all right. But if not, it'll be a retreat and return to the road. I know there's a farm a little bit further up in which I can join the trail I want to be on anyway. These look interesting. What are they? And this looks fun too. Let's go this way. Woo! In the jungle. Oh wow, look at these boardwalks here. <laughs> Jeez, I'm warming up quickly. It's a classic, drizzly, mild, Scottish day but look at this as we're climbing higher view's getting better and two seconds on and I've lost the trail I'm just backtracking I want to try and follow it because I'm thinking it's gonna avoid some of the bog which was just ahead all right regroup pretty sure it does come up here whether or not I was finding the path easy to follow didn't really bother me too much as I was wholeheartedly enjoying my surroundings. There was pine and star moss, lichen and an endless sea of bilberry bushes. All of the plants that I just love to be surrounded by. Alright, this all looks positive. Yeah, see? Very clear. Uh, I feel like my luck is running out a bit here. It's getting quite boggy. Um, I know I've just got to keep going uphill. I'm not worried as such, but even so, the trail needs more work. <laughs> and uh, I want to ah, avoid falling in this, she says, falling in it. Never mind. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. I have a tick. I was literally just about to say, this is prime tick territory. Yay me. Yeah, I'm also not going to zoom in on my trousers because they are absolutely covered in ticks. These are not coming in the house tonight. <laughs> Let's go. Go for a hike, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Who even said that? I bet not. Oh, there's a fence. Wait, there's a gate. Come to me, gate. Never mind, you can't move. I'm coming to you. 
and just watch your step now. I feel like I'm, uh, I don't know. There's a padlock gate. No. Where am I going? This is ridiculous. Gate. Deeper fence. Oh, just look at the OS map. Can you see that? Very close to the path. So actually, I need to pretty much get to the other side of this fence and then I'm there. Because this fence, well, I think this is the path, believe it or not. Thank you, OS. You're very kind to me. Now let's save some battery. Say goodbye. I can tell you to follow my nose. My last day in Scotland. Shouldn't have thought Scotland would let me get off lightly. Oh no, it had other plans. Because <laughs> this is not wet. Oh, waterproof socks for the win. Ha, you thought we could get me, Bog. Not today. Oh no. Can you see this? <laughs> Fence. Fence. Oh well, I'm going to have to climb some fences today. Nothing can hold me back. I am William Wallace, forging freedom through the wild countryside. Hi. I am William Wallace. <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know why, eh? That waffle's gone straight to my head. Does this work? Can we make... Oh, that's scary. Very sharp bramble. Never mind barbed wire. Look at this. It's an abbey-sized gap to fit through. Oh. Ready? I'm gonna stand on this piece of wire. Hope that it holds. Give it an extra bounce. And gracefully step off the other side. Duck under the zip wire. It's like being in the army. Oh. Freedom! I just dropped my tripod. Never mind. And excitingly, we have a Trossix trail sign. First one. Shows we've made it. Now that I was actually on a track, I knew things would be easier going from here, surrounded by an immense array of ancient trees and wide open views. So now that we have survived, we're going to be on the Great Trostics path, obviously, and uh, that means we've got signs, which is really helpful. So obviously this one is saying this way. Easy peasy. Can you hear the cookie? Very interesting to hear the cuckoos. So they have migrated here for the springtime, early summer. And uh, you know, they're arguably quite parasitic. They basically take over other birds' nests and, uh, or rather lay their eggs in other birds' nests and get other birds to raise their chicks, which is a, uh, you know, very unusual scene to play out in the natural world. And uh, also, they're smart. They fly very often in the sky as though they're a bird of prey, like a kestrel or a hobby or something. And again, the idea is there to reduce the chances of them becoming prey because they look like a predator. Yeah, cuckoos have a bit of a love-hate relationship with them. <laughs> but I do enjoy hearing them at this time of year. It's always a bit of a treat. Striking gorse here. Look at that dressage of yellow. Absolutely beautiful. Even on a drab day like today, eh? <laughs> and then we've got this ancient woodland here, which we're walking into, probably hence the cuckoo. And then we've got this beautiful burn here, coming down from the hillside. once you get up here it's a pretty straightforward path it's nice because you can just waddle along and uh, think I have to say like Scotland has a very diverse mix of footpaths and of course you have a right to roam so you can literally go anywhere and do anything <laughs> uh, which is great but uh, I do enjoy when I hit a road like this or a military road you know many of which were built by Telford in the 17th 1800s and uh, you know basically designed very often for you know the military to move in obviously 
and used by cattle drovers to, brew, to move cattle from the highlands to markets such as Thirsk and York and I love walking along those routes, they're full of history um, so yeah, I don't mind this at all right now How cool is this? We've got this post here with a bilberry bush on top Clearly been there for a while You can just see this mound up ahead that is Dunmore Hill Fort. So it's built around 2000 years ago. Um, obviously people would have lived there. It would have been a defensive fortress as well. Uh, and basically there's a whole bunch of terraced walls, which are not only for defensive purposes, but also to indicate power and status. If I wanted to, I could head up to the hill fort here, but I'm gonna leave that today. Um, there's a sign here, Iron Age Fort. And then just over there, I can see the bridge that we're gonna to take to cross over the river at the end of the lock. And then, funnily enough, I'm gonna be on familiar territory for a short while, because I'm gonna be joining the Rob Roy Way. It's a trail I walked in 2019, shot a film, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Um, it's gonna be good to relive a short stretch of that. So we are going to leave the Trossachs path now, which heads on to Calendar. That way, Calendar, Calendar. <laughs> We're heading this way. This bridge was the Garchonzi Bridge, spanning the E's Gopane River. It dated to 1777 and was built by Peter McKins as part of an improvement scheme to the nearby estate of the Duke of Perth after the 1745 Jacobite uprising. There we go. So that's where I followed the Rob Roy way into the village and uh, I'd walked along this road and actually I'm gonna keep my voice down because I saw quite a few red squirrels along here. One of my all-time favorite animals and uh, I'd love to be able to spot some today. Although I didn't see any red squirrels, there was still plenty to see, such as mushrooms clinging to precarious edges of tree bark and the East Lodge of the Invertrosox Estate, built as an Edwardian shooting lodge in 1911. coming down now so I'm gonna put my waterproof on but this is the spot where the Rob Roy Way came down and then obviously I walked along the road so now I'm heading into new territory which is nice but the route up there was beautiful headed up to a um, uh, a small lock and and uh, yeah highly recommend that but anyway let's go along the shore wow look at this purpose-built sanctuary for children and families affected by cancer. Please respect their short stay with us on this private site. Oh wow. Jeez, I had no idea that was here. And then it's given me goosebumps. Cancer is an awful, awful, awful illness. It's good to give. That's the charity. I'm going to check that out for sure. Shortly after this, I was passing the sailing clubhouse, where there was very little activity, save for a couple of swans swanning about on the shoreline. Hi, oh, yeah. hi. Hey. It's a really nice walk here along the shore, just being able to see across through the trees. I haven't seen any red squirrels yet, but uh, 
generally feeling okay just got an audio book on in the background just sort of not quite prepared to be in my mind at the moment um, looks like we're about to head past some uh, scout cabin as well and the rain is coming down but generally feeling pretty good This is quite exciting. We've got a uh, National Cycle Network sign. We're on route number seven. Here we go. So these literally are all over the entire country. There is a myriage, if that's the word, of cycle routes all the way across the United Kingdom. You can cycle from end to end, north to south, east to west along these routes. And this one here is just highlighting 50 miles to Glasgow. Our before you is nine miles, calendar is four. Hence there being loads of bikes about. Something I'm really keen to explore more in the future. So good to see this as a bit of a spur onwards. <laughs> I think it's time to put my hat away. See this? This is not good. Freaking rain. <laughs> All right, my hat. Get in there. He doesn't want to. He wants to have the adventures. Take them, thank you. How nice is this spot? I feel like I'd almost rather be them right now. Um, it's kind of hard to film things in this rain, but uh, doing okay. And oh my goodness, looks like we're gonna discover why you need a camping permit around here. Jeez, this is atrocious. Just devastating, look at this. Clearly, some folk have hung out here, had a big fire, big fire, and had a bit of a party. This is a flipping national park. I'm sorry, I just, I don't feel okay about it. You know, it looks like they had a tarp up as well. They've left the string on the trees. This, this is my problem. Like I mentioned earlier, it's like these people are being called equivalent to someone like me, or maybe you who just literally carry everything we need. You know, we put up, put down, leave no trace. It's because of people like this, that it's getting harder and harder for folk like you and I to access the outdoors. Like there needs to be some kind of flipping education program. It's just, it's infuriating and heartbreaking. This is, it's really hard to see. I don't know, I feel just lost for words. You know, the natural world all around the planet is under unfathomable pressures from overpopulation, from climate change, from urbanization, from extraction of natural resources, um, illegal logging, yada, 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 whatever it is. And, and the last thing we, or the first thing we should be doing is looking at our national parks and thinking about how we can protect them. And you, you know, just this is, this is not on. Like, <laughs> never mind finding people who park on verges because there's not enough car parks and they want to go for a walk in nature because it's good for their mental health. These are the people that need to be caught. Like, I just think the attention is not in the right place. And I'm not going to get po political here. And I'm, I'm anyone who's doing anything to protect nature and allow this place to be accessible for people is doing awesome, you know. But please, guys. <laughs> When you dig a hole and you make a fire, that ground is scorched, it's burnt. It's gonna take a long, long time for that to heal. There's more than just trash here. There is, there is damage to the ground, to the soil, to future plant life. It's very sad.
It took me a while to realize who that was, but it's some rangers heading out to clean up the trash. Part of the job, sad part of the job, but massive thank you to the rangers who work out here and keep this space as clean and safe. Hiya. 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 Having now left the shores of the loch behind, my view was now replaced with the River Blackwater, where there seemed to be plenty of geese making themselves very well known indeed. Here we go. This is Forest Drive. And uh, not far to go at all now. View is definitely opening up now. Feeling optimistic about the weather. So beautiful. Never mind the rain. So you can see this junction can continue on along, but I'm continuing. I turn right now to heading on to the village and sort of skirting around, um, cross over the river. It's kind of exciting. Um, you know, I'm feeling pretty good actually. My uh, back injury is there. Let's just put it like that. But otherwise, you know, legs are feeling good, everything's feeling good. I mean, nothing about this is strenuous. I think that's my point I'm trying to highlight here is, you know, if you've got a rubbish day in Scotland, bad weather, or, you know, for whatever reason, you're not able to get up high, this is a nice route. It's uh, placid and beautiful. Can't really go wrong. And as you can see, this is it on a rainy day. What would it be like on a sunny day? Just gonna have to come back and try it. <laughs> Cuckoo in the background there. And then we've also got all these bluebells lining the bank here. Shame I can't film them, but that's okay. And then we've uh, just got this open view now and the lock is way down there. We've done good. Looks like we're heading on through this farm. Real nice property. Look at that. Jeez. Have you ice cream? <laughs> How cool is that? Here we go, look at this. This is black water. So it comes from Loch Achre down to Loch Venture. Getting hammered by the rain right now. <laughs> wow, look at this bridge. Some kind of pack horse bridge here. Just uh, tucked away in the trees. Wow, just so cool and black water flowing underneath. Sorry about the rain on the lens. It's quite wide actually. And you can see where it gets its name. Really dark in its colour. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I'm starting to feel the pain on my shoulders quite a lot now. Uh, which is not very comfortable at all. So yeah, I'm going to see if I can find somewhere to stop. I've just gone past the buyer in which looked very nice, but uh, I thought I'd just see what's in the village. And here is the road. <laughs> Sad. There's the cafe. It's closed. <laughs> Never mind. Let's get back to the car. Okie dokie guys, so the Great Trossics Path heads up there, other side of the road um, and I'm going to follow the road all the way back to the car so it's another couple of miles actually, um, not recommended but it means that I can get some speed on, it's actually got quite late. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm feeling good, it's been a really good walk so as I said earlier, you know, I, I hope that you've been inspired to check this route out, um, you don't have to walk back along the road. There was even another route that way, uh, sort of closer to the lock, but I didn't want to risk the bog. My guidebook said it's quite boggy. Um, and of course, if you're doing the full circle, you would have gone up there along a good solid path. And uh, now I'm on a good solid road. So there we go. That is it. A wrap. Boom. Skadoosh. Happy days. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. I'm going to, I'm looking forward to getting dry, to be honest. Uh, but all good. Thank you for watching. And until next time, enjoy your adventures. 
and stay wild. I'll see you soon.